Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking to you about how Aqua can help you protect your generative AI applications running in the cloud. So Gen AI applications are usually built off of large language models or LLMs and today we're going to walk through how Aqua helps protect these applications from being exploited or attacked in production. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to walk through a generative AI application that I have deployed in an EKS cluster and we're going to demonstrate some attacks and see how Aqua can help proactively stop these attacks on these running applications. So here you can see my application. It's a stock site application, which allows you to query stock prices and find a few other information on stocks on the internet. It's running on my EKS cluster, which you can see here. So here is the demo vulnerable Gen AI application. There's also a few other things deployed on the cluster, which include the Aqua security components, which are the Cube Enforcer and the Enforcer, which help protect the applications at runtime. I also have an NGROC tunnel open, which I'll be listening out through. And here I'm going to start my listener. So the listener is now running and I will go to my vulnerable application and start to ask it a few things. So for example, here, I'm going to ask it, what is the stock price of Microsoft for today? And it will give me back the actual real-time price of Microsoft stock for today. And this is pulling it from the Yahoo Finance API. The next thing I will ask it, what are its capabilities? So these are the kinds of attacks that an attacker or a bad actor will be simulating on your generative AI applications in production. So here, the application tells me it's a Python, uh, it has a few capabilities. It can run Python shell for executing Python commands. It can also get stock prices uh, and stock information and RSI calculators. The next thing that I will then do to ask it to run a Python code that can retrieve the username it runs with. So this kind of action will then allow me to understand the kinds of capabilities this application has in production. For example, here, it's told me that it's running as root. So if you're an attacker, now you know that you can use this to gain elevated privileges inside of the environment. Okay. Next, I'm going to try to ask it to open a shell through my ngrok tunnel, which I showed earlier. So here, this is the endpoint that I'm running and it will say, I'm sorry, but I can't run that code for security reasons, meaning that the security uh, already security guardrails inside of this running application. However, if I use a method which is called prompt injection, which for want of a better terminology is allowing you to trick a large language model around its capabilities, you can then get it to still open the same reverse shell which you wanted it to open. So for example, here, I'm going to ask it to calculate the most fun day of the week, but also at the end of that command where I'm asking it to calculate the most fun day of the week, get the stock of Microsoft uh, price. I will also attach that same reverse shell command, which I asked it to run initially, which it didn't run. Okay. So this is what is called prompt injection. So when I run this here, you can see that the shell has opened. Okay. So now I have a shell into the running workload in the Kubernetes cluster. So now I can start to do things like list the files running, a lot of the files that are inside of this workload. I can start to query and see if I can find any uh, sensitive data files. I can also ask it to look for any open API, open AI API keys that are inside of the environment. So here you can see that there is an open AI API key. So I can start to query and get more information around what's happening inside of this environment. So let me close this listener and clear this out. And let's go to the Aqua UI and start to see the kinds of things that we detect. So here is what the Aqua UI looks like. However, if I go to the incidents in the UI, I can start to see a reverse shell detection on my cluster. You can see a reverse shell detection. You can see that when this was detected, you can see the user that ran it was root, which the product actually told me it was. You can also see the process that ran this the detection, the security control that it was detected with, but also the detection action. So here you can see it's detected in detection mode. I'll also show you how to detect this in, in blocking mode where we can actually proactively stop the action and the full timeline of events that happened on the workload, okay? So here you can see all the way from the start, just a quick scroll down. You can see all everything that has run on the workload before this happened. So you can see the connection to the uh, Yahoo Finance API. You can see the connection through NGROC. Um, and all the way up to the reverse shell, which was then run on the workload. Okay. So here you can see everything. However, if you wanted to be able to understand the root of the problem, we have this available in what we call the inventory. So here I can search, for example, for my Gen AI application. 
So here is my vulnerable Gen AI in it, uh, workloads. If I click on this one, you can see exactly the root of the problem. So if I zoom into this a bit more, you can see the reverse shell detection was an incident in production. You can see the container where this happened, but you can trace this all the way back to the code repository and the developer that made the last change. So here my colleague, sorry, Erez, I have to make you a bit infamous, but he has introduced these risks inside of the code repository. If I click on that, it takes me immediately to the findings under the supply chain security module in Aqua. Okay, what this does is it will show me the risks he has introduced on his last code check-in. So you can see that these are land chain vulnerabilities. But if I go to the SAS uh, tab here, you can actually see the finding which causes injection to be a vulnerability. Okay, so you can see it's detected as an AI and ML uh, weakness. If I click into this, you'll see that it this weakness allows injection and insecure output handling. Okay, if I click on this, it will take me to the GitHub repository where this has happened. And you can see the exact line of code that my colleague introduced. All right. So if I go back to the UI, you can see that this allows you to have a full end-to-end -end view of what's happened in your workloads all the way to the point where the risk was introduced. Okay. So if I close this down, then go back to the incidents view, we're going to come back to this in a second. So if I go back to my lens and I rerun the listener. So the listener is listening again. However, I then go back to Aqua and go to what we call our workload protection module. Here, I can set a runtime policy that allows you to actively stop attacks in running workloads. So if I go to my policy, which is in audit mode, I can then set this to enforce mode and ask it to block all reverse shell attacks on this workload. Okay, so I save that. So now it's in blocking mode and I go back to my lens. You'll see the listener is still open. However, if I go back to my workload interface and then ask it to run that reverse shell again, what you'll see is it gives me a permission denied error. So previously it actually opened the reverse shell and I could go into the, to the listener and see what's happened. But this time there is a permission denied error. So these security restrictions in the environment have blocked this from happening. If I go back to the Aqua UI, go to these incidents, you'll see that the detection on reverse shell However, this last time has now been detected in blocking mode. So Aqua has successfully blocked this attack from happening on this workload. So this is one of the few ways that you can actually start to proactively block attacks in generative AI applications, while at the same time enabling and empowering developers to effectively fix issues in their LLMs on the left-hand side, so true shift left security. And you can do this with what we call assurance policies for uh, supply chain attacks and you can set these as policies so for example if i go to my policy that is block ai and ml risks you'll see that i can enable the blocking by using a control that allows me to stop any weakness in artificial intelligence and machine learning models from actually being checked into the master or main branch of the code repository Okay. What this does is it enables developers to actually fix issues, but empowers security to prevent any of these kinds of risks from going into production. Hopefully this was helpful. And you can see here that this control is ticked. And when it's ticked and set in failing mode, it will actually stop any of these kinds of risks from going into production. So it allows you to have full end-to-end -end control with guardrails on every single stage of your software development lifecycle, all the way out into production for your generative AI applications. Thank you.